Hey guys, welcome to TechSource.tv. My name is Dan, and today we're taking a look at the Fantex PHTC12 DX CPU cooler. Now, this is one. Of, this is Fantex's latest CPU cooler. It has two 12 centimeter fans and a push-pull configuration, which means it's going to push a whole ton of air and get your CPU nice and frosty. Um, and it comes in a various colors. So we have the blue one. You can get it in red, you can get it in silver, and you can get it in black. So whatever suits your needs, you can get the color, um, which is really awesome. And it, aesthetically, they look really good. So, but anyways, today this, this video will be focusing mainly on the performance of it. So how well it's gonna perform against other coolers we've tested and how good it will cool our test rig, as well as the acoustic performance of how quiet this unit is or maybe how loud it is. And finally, um, exterior styling. Now, will this video go in that particular? I have no idea. It will go in whatever order I feel like editing it after, so it might go in total reverse. So, uh, but anyways, that is what we're doing today, and that's the, the agenda today for this video. If you want to see what came in the box and all that funky stuff, go ahead and check out somewhere in, up here or down there in the description of the video for our unboxing. So check that out. Anyways, guys, stick around for the Fantex TC12DX CPU Cooler Review. First, we're starting off with the overall styling, what it mounts on, and how it's made, and all that jazz, or what it's made of. So, basically, the Fantex PHTC12DX uh, is a aluminum heatsink cooler with copper heat pipes, and there's four of them attached to a copper nickel-plated base. So we have four heat pipes that are about you know uh, five millimeters in thickness, which isn't which isn't crazy thick, but it's decent enough, and it's going to do the job well. As well as we got two 12 centimeter fans attached to it in push pull configuration. So we got this one intaking and this one exhausting air, and that creates a lot of extra pressure inside here, which is going to move that air out real fast and it's going to dissipate the heat really well. As well as each fan is a PWM fan, which is really nice. So they can spin up, uh, spin up and down an RPM depending on how you have your motherboard set up or if you attach them to a fan controller that's PWM compatible. Um, so that's really good. So you can do uh, 600 to 1800 RPM, and that's really going to vary it's on how much noise you can handle, but uh, also on how much cooling you really want. So that's really awesome. Now, for what CPU sockets is going to mount on, it's pretty much anything out there on the market today. So for Intel, you got 2011, 1155, 1150, 1156, uh, 1366, and 775. So that's a lot of stuff it can mount on. As well as for AMD side, for you guys, you got FM2, FM1, AM3, AM3. AM2 and AM1 and AM2 or AM2 plus. Yeah, that should be everything. Okay, so you got lots of stuff there. So you, like this thing's pretty universal. It's going to mount on lots of stuff and you don't need a backplate for the AMD guys. You just need to just use the accommodating hardware and it goes right on your AMD stock system pretty much. Um, now I never mounted on AMD, but on Intel, it's fairly easy. I can report. So that's good. Uh, overall, it's a pretty solidly built unit. It was easy to install for us and... You know, we didn't have any quality issues with it, so that's good. And that's pretty much about it. So as you can see, it looks nice. We've got nice, cool touches here on the top. It says Fantex on the top of the the actual cooler itself. It says Fantex on the fans. And actually, in the blades of the fans, you got these little notches here, and they call them uh, Vortex Boosters. So that's pretty cool. And they're nine-bladed fans for optimized static pressure. So that's really good. Then the static pressure can go all the way up to a max of 2.078. MMH2O. So that's the static pressure measurement they're using. I notice a lot of more European companies use that over uh, some other static pressures. But that's actually a, a rating of over two is actually very good. So that's a high static pressure. And these fans would actually work good on a rad radiator. And that's why they're pushing through a densely packed air cooler. So that's cool. So let's go ahead and look at how good the acoustic performance is of this cooler. We're going to be doing acoustic testing for the Fantex PHTC12DX cooler. The mic is here. So literally my hand away. I am about a foot away, so this would be uh, like a test if your ear was literally right up to it, but it will give you a good uh, indication of how noisy the cooler or how quiet it can be. So I'm gonna turn up the uh, fans here, so. That is a full speed at uh, 1800 RPM, but just one quick note. You can see this box is moving a lot. Or let me get something that's lighter. This fan cooler, even though it runs kind of loud at max RPM, but look at the... It's like lots of air. 
Sorry about my dirty rag, but yes, there's lots of air coming off it. That's full of thermal gel. It's gross. We'll turn it down. That's about half speed. That's barely moving. So as you can see, you have a good variation of full performance, if you don't care about noise, or quietness, if you're into that. So it's good to hook these fans up to a fan controller or through your motherboard if you can control it through PWM. So we've come to the, por the portion of the test where you've probably wanted to see the whole video. Anyways, um, so performance reviews. Now I'm just going to go over a few things of how we test our coolers. They sit in an open bench, which is our high-speed test piece, a high-speed test PC top deck station or something like that it's called anyways it's just an open bench you throw a motherboard on top of it and you pop your coolers on it's really simple it's great for changing on hardware a lot easier than doing it through cases uh the good benefit about that is yes it's easy to change hardware too there's nothing else assisting the cooler so it's open air around it so whatever it's just going to suck air and throw it out so that's really good too so you really get to see the true performance of the cooler and as well as we run uh an i7 377k uh, overclock to 4.4 gigahertz for our overclock test. We know we use stock clock test as well for 3.5 gigahertz. And the turbo mode's turned off, so you get a nice even clock. So no fluctuations while well, Prime 95 is running for about 10 minutes under load, and then, other, then it's turned off for 10 minutes just for a cool down test. And then we'll take the numbers after another 10 minutes after that as an idle test. So we run load, cool down for 10, so we run 10 minutes load, 10 minutes cool down, then 10 minutes after that. So a total of a 30 minute test. Um, then we get our two numbers and plop them into our Excel chart and see what's what, see where they place. So that's really cool. And uh, that's about it. So anyways, guys, um, here are the numbers. We're gonna do a little wrap up and conclusion on the PHTC 412 DX cooler. So you just saw the performance results, you heard the audio test, and you saw what I think about the exterior styling of it. Now, final conclusions. So overall, what I think about the unit. It's a really good unit. It's a bit on the noisy side at full speed, so as you can hear, it gets loud. But if you tone it down a bit, you still get ex you still get decent cooling performance. Now, when we do our cooling performance tests, we only really test them at max speed because. We want to see exactly how good is it at max speed. Um, but you also get it in a variety of colors, which are really nice. You know, the blue, I think, looks really sharp. You can get it in red. I've seen pictures of it. looks good. You can get it in white, silver, black, so many different colors. It's awesome. And as well as it comes at a good price, too, at $59 Canadian. So that's really good. You know, that's just current prices going off around the end of February 2013. So that might change, but something to keep in mind. The best thing I think about it is it's, it's small packaging. Yes, it runs loud, but for the you know trade-off of it being noisy, um, you're getting amazing cooling performance. So when it comes to, like, I'm just gonna quickly pop up my Excel chart of what you guys just saw, was in, in stock clocks, it beats out an X40 in silent mode. It beats out an H100 in full on like leaf blower mode, which is as loud as it goes. And it kind of puts its little nose right up there with the X60 in silent mode. It just goes, hey, 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 guess what? It's like, what? I can do just as good as you and look how damn small I am. It's awesome, I love that. But it's nowhere near as quiet, but it can do it. So if you're on the budget and you can, don't have the money to spend on an X60 and you don't have the room for one, hell, this thing does an amazing job. Even under the overclocks, it's, it's sitting up there bugging the X40 in silent mode. It's bugging the H100 in full on like loud mode. That's insane. I really love that. You know, this goes to show that air coolers are still very good today. They're still relevant. So if you're looking for yourself to save a few bucks, but you don't want to get something that's like entirely really cheap, and you want to get something that, you know, you want to spend a bit of money on a CP cooler, and you want something that's good quality, well-made, and it performs very well, and, you know, it ain't going to break the bank. For 60 bucks, you can, really can't go wrong with this unit. Yeah, it gets a little bit noisy, but at full speed, it's a trade-off. And you're at Lance, who the hell cares? So it's a really good unit. My only complaint, as I said, it's a bit noisy, but you get a fan controller, problem solved.
That's all you need to do. As you guys, so that's it. Fantex TH12DX cooler. It's exceptionally awesome, and it blew my mind by the performance. I didn't think it would keep up with that. I didn't think it would keep up with an X60. I didn't think it would keep up with any of that stuff. With a small cooler with dual fans. How good really could it be? But it's, it's amazing. Like, it blows me away. So, there you go, guys. It's an exceptional cooler and great bang for the buck. So, see you guys next time on TechSource.tv. If you found this video informative, please remember to like it. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, please remember to subscribe to our channel. And as well, please remember to check out our question source videos on Mondays and our tech source news videos on Sundays. Those go up at uh, times and Eastern Standards. Yes. See you guys next time on TechSource.tv. Bye.